Alright, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get the QR and audiobook achievements, which are the two achievements you'll need to run the game. So as you can see here, I have both of these achievements locked again, and I've also gone and deleted my save file, so it'll behave exactly the same way as if I never had these achievements. Uh, so this isn't going to be like a real speedrun, I've found a lot of simplified strats which I'm going to show you because hopefully it'll be easy for you to do. But there's still a few things you need to change. Firstly, because it can't, because we're trying to be fast even though it's another speed run, you want your player speed to be fast. And then in performance, sorry, you want your CPU speed and GPU speed, as well as your GPU memory all to be lowest. You don't necessarily need to customise these settings, and I'm not going to go through what I've changed, but it might help you. And then last one, you just want your level caching to be ultra and max FPS to be unlimited. So then you just start the run. Behold. So one of the first things I should quickly point out, the QR reader achievement doesn't count QRs like this, which are by my Steam friends. It only counts if you read the preset ones that the game already has in it. So if you see me skip what seems like an obvious QR, that's the reason it's from one of my friends, it's not actually there. So we're going to do this first for Nintendo, normally there's a weird out of bounds you'd do, but there's some QRs here you want to read. You want to go read this one, and then you want to come up further down the tunnel and read this one. And within each I have hidden a sigil. Then you want to walk up to the gate and read these two through it. Might be a bit hard, but you should be able to get them both. The to come. And then I'm just gonna restart checkpoints so Elohim stops talking. This is the level we'd normally get to from going out of bounds at the very beginning. But because we're not out of bounds, we're just gonna go do the intended solution here. And then we're going to walk out and come over into Outnumbered. Are not mere toys. They are the sigils of our name. In Outnumbered, we're actually going to do the speed strat. You grab this jammer, and you come up here, and you want to do an item jump. So that's you, with your back to this rock thing, you press space and drop your item at the exact same time. Now for this one specifically, you then also need to pick it up again and drop it again. To push you either on top of or over this wall. If you stand here for too long, that turret will kill you, so just make it past that gap for a quick cleave. Grab the sigil and reset checkpoint. We're going to be doing this a lot because it lets us move across the map really fast. Now we're going to come over to Peephole over here and do basically the exact same thing. Item jump and then place it down again to make it over. Uh, whoops, didn't actually need to do that. Okay, now only the two of us were doing a normal item jump. You come over to sort of this bit of the wall for jammer, and then place it down and jump at the same time. Which lets you get onto that ledge, and then you just grab a jammer again and climb up the rest here. So you can make it over this wall. And jam the turret and grab the sigil. Now once again we're doing one of the sort of double ones to get up this wall. Now this jump can be a bit tricky at first, but it's usually not too bad. But you come from that small up here, and then from here you can either do a weird risky jump over there, but who wants to do that when you can just walk right off to get onto this wall. Climb up here and then jump into Trio. Now we're not actually going to solve Trio from inside, instead we're going to come out here and do this jump. The jump's a bit weird, you want to start sort of close to the small, but then you want to look more to the left when you actually jump. But you should be able to keep it after a few tries, and you're going to have to do this anyway if you try speedrunning the game, so I figure I might as well add it in. And then when you're on the walls, come around here, and then from here, the very edge of that wall, you just sprint jump over that wall to get to the sigil. Restart checkpoint again and head over here to poking a sleeping lion. This one we're going to do the intended solution to instead. So that's you jam that from there, you jam the turret from there. 
you walk around and you jam that. And now we're done with A1. So we're actually going to go to A3 next, just because it's closest with our walking between them. And the first thing we're going to do is read this QR. Even though it doesn't actually have any text, it still counts towards the achievement, so we might as well. Then we're going to come into an escalating problem and read this QR. Then we're going to quickly grab this jammer before the line comes too close. And this is speedrun start again, but again you're going to have to do this anyway in any percent, so... Come over here, stand sort of 45 degree angle in between the two walls, and then tap right. And then item jump, and flip your camera back and forth a bit, and spam space. And you should make it over this wall eventually. There are some specific bits on the rock you need to jump on, but by just moving your camera like that you should be good. So you can come here, climb the ladder, don't worry about the fact that that turret's still on. And look straight ahead, don't look at the sigil, look straight ahead, walk forwards, and you'll get it. And then you can just reset, come here, reset again, and go to the next level. If we're a bit tied up, we're just going to do the intended solution. Oh, well, that was silly of me. But there's this jammer here you need to place first. You could try the speeder and start just making it up this wall and then doing a sort of weird jump onto that wall and over there. But I think that might be a bit tricky, so might as well try this. You only actually need to get two jammers out of here too, you can leave that last one. But you jam this wall, place your jammer for a bit, and then jam the two turrets. Reset, and reset again, now we head over to Swallow the Key. Here there's another QR, which is this one in particular. This is the one most people get in speedrun, so of course all my friends place theirs around it to make it more confusing. And then we're going to come over to this particular rock here, jump on it, and then walk sort of into this corner, and then you can just jump straight up onto that corner. And from there onto the rest of the wall, whoops. And from here, you can jump over here to grab the sigil. Now we're actually going to go unlock connector. So this is the most efficient solution for a connector. So just remember that. There we go, it stopped shaking again. And now we're going to go off to A2. Uh, so firstly we're going to read this QR, and then we're going to walk into all the windows, and this is the first thing that might be a bit tricky, so we want to do a nose to jump here, which looks like that. Basically you place down your jammer, and then you jump and pick it up at the same time, but you need to do it all rather quickly. If you do it right, you end up on here with the jammer, and that's important, you need the jammer. Then you walk around here so you can jump over this fence, walk around to the edge of the level, and here's why we need the jammer. So we can jam that and grab the sigil. Then we're gonna walk up here and read this QR. Which will... And then we're gonna just come over here and grab the audio log, so... Now here, this is Colosseum Jump. Kind of difficult, but again, you're gonna need to do it in any percent, so... What you do is you jump out at an angle and then you just curve back over in mid-air. And from here you can try the speedrun structures, run over here and from on top of this pillar, sprint jump onto there and buffer jump over that wall. But that's a bit hard, so let's just walk around the entire level instead. Like so. Whoops, turn too far, and then we're going to head over here to Suicide Mission. And this is just going to be an intended solution. I would be a bit careful of where you stand here, because the explosion that's going to happen is actually bigger than it looks. I didn't actually need to move that, but then you can just come and grab the sigil. 
now off to A4. First thing we're going to do in A4 is we're going to turn around and jump off the cliff. There's a reason for this, don't worry. And then we're going to head up to push it further. The glitch storm here will happen, but we're just going to run inside the level and reset to skip it. And I'm here, if you like, you should try, oh well, wow, really first try that strat a few times. It's the speedrun strat where you do a bump jump. Basically, you jump and hit this at just the right way so it gives you a bunch of extra height over. The easiest of strats, so you might have some trouble with it. I'm really making this look easier than it actually is. So if it takes you long enough and you decide it's not worth it, you can also come around here and do the intended solution. But you're going to have to do the bump jump in any percent. Like, you don't have this option, so I really recommend trying it. So when you have the sigil reset, and head over to branch it out. This is going to be the first use of alternate use, so you press your alternate use key, which for me is middle mouse. And this will pick up the connector, but keep all of its connections. And then you can very easily connect it to that one up there too, and just finish the level. And off to don't cross the stream, so we'll do something kind of similar. Alternate use, and then place it down there. Specifically what we're trying to do is we're trying to move this intersection closer to the actual barrier. So the next trick we're going to do is the laser overlap, which... You walk through the lasers back and forth. You only actually need to do this three times, but I can't really turn my camera because it'll mess it up. But you might have heard it open the barrier and it stays open. And then you can run through and collect the sigil. And then we're going to do the same thing again here for above all that, but this time we're already close enough. So we just come straight here, run back and forth through these lasers a few times, and then run straight through the barrier to collect the sigil. And finally we're going to come over here, read this QR, and then walk back there and grab that audio log. You just need to actually pick up these audio logs, you don't need to listen to them in full because they will start playing automatically. So you can just reset the moment you have that. And we're going to go crab you with this solution. And then head over to A6. Where we're going to run over here and read this QR. And then quickly head back over to Mobile Minefield. So we have a bit of dead time in this level at first, so that's why we can read that QR safely. But you still want to try and make that cycle if you can. But if you miss it, of course, it's no big deal. Just wait for the mine to go past again. So you come into this corner and do a normal item jump. And when you're up on this rock, you can just jump straight onto the wall and run over here to the sigil. I'm going to reset and head over to Deception. Uh, if you're lucky, you might have a paint bucket spawn here. If you do, you can go use paint in place of this connector, and it'll be a bit easier. But it's not really that big of a deal. So go grab your connector, and you'll come over to sort of this part of the rock. But if you have paint, just look straight down when you do this, but with the connector you need to look out of it. And then just item jump. Now if you go too far back here, you'll actually fall through the ground, because it doesn't exist there, but it's not a big deal, you can just walk straight out. To avoid that, I'd actually recommend also curving your camera in midair. Oops. Uh, come on. Like so. So you can make it either onto that wall or straight over like I did. Because that also saves a tiny bit of time. But regardless of if you curve it or if you just make it up there and jump over, grab the sigil and then reset. And here we're quickly going to grab a few more QRs. And we're off to Bichromatic. There are a number of places you can do this, and Bichromatic can come over to about halfway through that straight bit. And then again, either with paint looking straight down, or looking out of it with your connector, do an item jump. Uh, there's another spot over here, which I like using. 
And there are probably a few more, but no matter what you use, just go get up out of bounds here. And then make your way around the level to collect the sigil. Then go do it again. And this time you want to walk through this wall here, it just doesn't exist. And then I'll just drop that off because we don't actually need it. You want to jump onto, or walk onto this sort of higher bit of rock, which lets you jump onto this wall, and onto the roof. And from here, you can jump the gap and make it onto this wall. And from here, you just follow the wall, but be careful here because you can't actually stand on these fences. You need to make sure to jump over them. And then just jump straight to the sigil and reset. Sorry, I just needed to scroll down in my notes. Uh, so we're going to come here and read this QR, and then grab this audio log. I'm going to head over to one little buzzer and read this QR. And now we're just going to do the intended solution again. Once again here, it's probably not too bad. Doing a speedrun solution, just to come over here and do one of those item jumps up where you need to grab it again to push yourself. But the intended solution here is pretty easy, so might as well. So it makes it a bit easier for you. Okay, so now I'm going over the fence. This bit's actually kind of tricky. So, like, I still have no trouble with this with all my time playing the game. But you want to, from sort of this ledge here, you want to jump onto the very corner of this rock. Like I said, it can be tricky. So you can also come here and grab this cube. And there are actually two things you can do with it. The obvious thing to do would be place it here and just take the guy to jump up. Like so. But it's actually a bit easier if I find to come over here and try to just this pillar specifically and just jump straight up. Oops. Now regardless of how you made it up here, let me get this again. You wanna follow the wall round to make it up here and then here. From there you jump over to get that sigil. And you do the exact same thing again. Oops, sorry. And this time jump over here to grab the sigil. Okay, now friendly crossfire. It looks tricky, but it's actually kind of easy. First you reset checkpoint and instantly jam that barrier. That's because you'll get a quick cycle. If you miss, it's quicker to reset again and try again. Then jam that turret so you can move the cube out of the way. Now this bit looks risky but it's perfectly safe as long as you're standing behind the button. So go forwards until that outline appears and then go jam that turret. You do need to be a bit quick though so that the mine coming towards you doesn't kill you. And just go grab the sigil and read this QR. You are and grab the cube and come over here. But your choices Here you want to do what we call an X drop. You press your reset button, which is usually X, and you jump at the same time. Which lets you get on top of the cube. But if you miss it, it's not that big of a deal, because you can make a guy to jump from this rock. And then take the guy to jump up there, since I will need to do this guy to jump. And wait for yourself to settle down like this first, then jump onto this bit of the rock, over onto this wall, and then over here to grab the sigil. Now quickly a few QRs, there's one there, one there, and over this wall we have seven. And when you have them all, reset and leave the world. In A7 we have one QR here, an audio log here, and one QR here, which you all want to grab. I'm going to come up here to windows into a labyrinth. This again is kind of tricky, but you're going to have to learn it. You want to come a line of the statue and then walk forwards and jump shortly after. I think you jump from somewhere like here. And if you do it right, you'll end up on top of a small statue, and you can jump onto this wall. From this wall, come here, walk out of it, and do a jump around here. 
you can technically stay on the first wall and just curve around this, but it's easier if you do it my way. And grab the citral and come down here to lock from inside. First we want to read these three QRs. And then come inside and this is... Well, it, I say it's a simple item jump, but it's not really. It doesn't work in a lot of setups. But I have a pretty good one. So you come and push yourself straight into this corner. When you look at this particular leaf here, the one that sticks out the second furthest, and then just auto jump while holding back, and then grab the connector again. From the top of this pillar, you can then connect those two and run straight to the citral. Now, here's the first spot we're going to be using paint. It usually spawns right here. But there's a 1 in 8 chance to spawn there, and it seems something has gone wrong, so I'm quickly going to run out to the death barrier here again. I'm not sure why, but this seems in the death barrier in A4 seems a bit inconsistent. Okay, cool, so I hit that death barrier and my paints actually spawn to the stone. So we're going to come around here, you can try and make that jump, but also just walk around, it's not that big of a deal. Now here's the first required paint jump, you see this bit of the rock that sticks out, you want your back to be like right in that, and then just place down the paint and jump at the same time. Uh, yep, you get all of these, so you then walk up this rock, and come around here, and from here jump over here. From here the last second you can make the jump over here. Actually, let's you jump down here to get trapped inside. And then we're just going to repeat that a bunch. So come back over here, line your back up, jump. And then from here, instead, jump over this way. And down here, actually, let's get pinhole windows. And then finally, once again, line yourself up, jump. And you want to jump onto this roof and onto these rocks. And then line yourself with this wall and jump down here so you can go get two thousands. And now we're done with A. Oh, what am I doing? That's not the right solution. There we go, so this is the solution for the AK. Let's focus on it for a few more seconds. Okay, now on the elevators we do elevator glitch, which is you press the floor you're on and then you spam the floor you want to go to. You have proven and then when you get the checkpoint, it seems I actually missed that. It's interesting. So you hit the floor you're on and then that's not right. Come on, this isn't actually as complex as I'm making it seem. Hit the floor you're on, spam the opposite one a bit. And then when the elevator starts going up, you'll get a checkpoint and you can just reset and skip it all. Oh, whoops, I forgot to get some extra QRs here. Around the right side of the A building, we have four QRs here you want to read. is solved like this. Let me do the elevator glitch again, but I really miss it again. I'm just gonna take the elevator normally. But also great beauty. As you walk amongst these tombs, consider all those who came before Okay, just to reset to speed up opening the elevator a bit. I'm going to come straight into B1. Firstly, read that QR. Eternal life. But know that eternity may only be attained by those who serve a purpose. And then we're going to come up here. And here, intended solution is pretty simple, so we're just going to do that. I won't get it this cycle, but this cycle I will. Reset checkpoint and turn around. 
I mean, I think I actually forgot about that QR on my route. I think that's a real one. Oh well. Okay, so in window through a door, we're gonna come grab this jammer, come do another safe card and jump like that. But you actually need to curve this one. So you wanna curve your camera so you can make it over this wall. This might take you a few attempts. But once you know how, it's pretty easy. And here you can reset again. Let me quickly check. Yeah, that's a real QR. I guess I forgot about it. This one's a real QR too. This one's for my friend though. And we're gonna come around to over the fence. So here we're just gonna do intended solution. The speed on strat isn't really much faster, but it's a bit harder, so whatever. So jam this, scrap that situation, and then from here, you'll notice down there we can barely see the barrier. You want to jam that. This then lets you walk in here, just grab a connector, and place it on the button to quickly solve the third wheel. For road of death, I'm gonna go with this strat just because it's easier to explain. You climb the ladder, jump up onto this one, and then making sure to avoid that pillar, curve jump round, and grab the last jewel. Okay, now we go grab Than quickly. And scroll down my notes. Here's the solution again. setting it back to B2. I see all. I know all. My power knows Oh, whoops, no I'm actually doing this in roughly a slightly wrong order. I'm gonna lose a second here. It's not like that matters much. So you're gonna do an intended solution for Man on the Moon. And then it's actually gonna be quicker to just reset and walk straight into Tomb. Now, Tomb's actually a bit of a weird level, and I forgot about these two QRs again. It's not going to make it any faster getting the QR achievement, though, because this is the last block where we get it, you get like 9 all at once. So for Tomb, you want to go to Options, Perform, and set your max FPS to 60, because it makes the next trick here a lot easier. Which is a jammer glitch. You walk into roughly path. I'm not really sure what right pixel is, but it's slightly past halfway through the barrier. And then you can pick up the jammer and also walk through the barrier. I'm gonna do this a few times. It's just a lot easier to find the right pixel on 60 FPS. So you're gonna have almost no chance if you try this uncapped. I'm gonna go grab the sigil and we're not done with the jammer yet. Take it up here. Once you're here, you can switch back to unlimited. And then you can try some fancy jumps here, but they're a bit risky. If you fail, you'll have to do this. You come down here to this rock specifically that sort of sticks out. And you can, those who jump up it, remember that's place the jammer and then place and jump at roughly the same time. Uh, pick up and jump, sorry. And then you do it again to get up here. And then just jump onto this wall, or if you still have a jam, you can jump straight over in here to jam that and grab the sigil. Now we're gonna go grab the audio log here and read this cubar. Silent roads stretching for miles. The earth from space, all dark. And now oh, I'm actually gonna restart checkpoint here to get a better cycle because that was a really bad one. You wanna grab this jammer and do a nozu up this tree and over the wall. Uh, talk about it a bit more, but those mines are coming. Uh, so, for it, it needs to be this side of the tree specifically that you start on, but after that it's actually pretty lenient, you don't need to go too high. And yeah, just trying it a bit, you should get it pretty quickly. Uh, just 
whoops, I need to do B3 first. We start out just coming here to Eagle's Nest. So for this, you grab one of the cubes, walk into this corner, and then turn your camera until the cube outline clips into the wall like that. And you jump on it with a second cube and turn your camera really slowly. I think I missed it. And eventually you'll see that happening. When that happens, place the cube and just spam jump and hold back a bit. And you'll eventually make it over the wall. So now we're going to go to the next level. All of these QRs are by my friends, so none of them count, unfortunately. Okay, get blown away. We're going to do intended. Swap out the connector again, place it there. And then you want to place, this is actually kind of specific, you want to place the cube into this corner so that it's roughly a square shape that clips into the corner. And it'll get pushed out, that's intended, don't worry about it. And if you're on the very lowest settings, you can use this statue in the background as a guide. You want to put the cube in line with you. It, you want to stand in the spot where it's in line with the cube, sorry. And you want to back up until it just barely disappears. Here. Then you want to go into options, motion sickness options, player speed to slow, and equivalent to performance and max FPS to 60. Because here we're going to be doing a cube jump, you want to hold pick up and jump at the exact same time, and you'll go flying over the level. Now there are actually quite a few spots this jump can land, also as soon as you've landed you can switch back to fast and uncapped. Firstly if you land in here, just drop your cubes, you can jump up on this wall. If you land in this area, you take your free cubes and make a staircase to get up on the wall. If you land up here, you obviously just jump straight in there. If you land in here, you then place your cube there and just walk straight over here. And if you land in that area, you do the intended solution, which I can't remember off the top of my head. Then restart checkpoint, and we head over to Whoosh. So here these five are real QRs, so we'll read those, as well as these two in here. Now Whoosh is going to be a bit funny. Grab this cube and place it here. And you can just jump straight over the fan stream and you can pick up the fan so you can walk through here. We're going to do the same sort of thing here. You need to place the cube just slightly past that pillar and then jump to it. It'll actually teleport straight through the wall too, which is kind of funny. Then you can jump around the fan stream and remove it to make it safe again and grab whoosh. Okay, now we come here and grab the corner. This is basically just... Whoops, let me fix my resolution first. I play in windowed mode, so occasionally I accidentally do that. So this is basically just the fan solution, but rotated. If you're lucky like me, you'll find paint here. I could ignore it for the first level, but then we'll use it. Oh, and there's a QR in here too, isn't there? Oh no, I counted that one, good. So, come in here, read this QR. And then there's an easter egg. Well, not really an easter egg, but for the star you can... find a blue laser source from the top of the pyramid, so we're just gonna do that here to solve this level. And now we're gonna come grab paint, which might be here, or it might be here. If you don't have it yet, don't worry though. I'm gonna come into self-help tutorial, just quickly drop the paint, and we're gonna do the intent solution. So you get a recording to stand on that button, then flip the switch, and get your next recording to stand on the second button. Yeah, that's player 
QR. Pick up your pain to gain and read this QR. Now if you're lucky like me and got a good paint, you can come over to this tree and double paint and just do an item jump up it. It's really free, you actually don't even need to jump. And you can just walk here and grab the sigil. But if you're not so lucky, you start a recording, stand on this button for a second, stand on this one for a second, then stop it, and just walk straight through here. Which is the intended solution again. And then there's a QR there we want to read. Okay, there are two strats here you could do. I'm not going to show off the first one because I'd lose my paint, but you, inside the level, reset checkpoint, run up here quickly, start a recording, stand in here, run back, stop it, and run through here before the fans had time to start. The other strat is to, while not holding paint, because paint actually drops your FPS by a ton, walk straight into this corner, look down, and hold forwards and spam space. Sounds silly, but you make it up the wall like this, and then you can walk around here and grab the sigil. Oh, and there's a QR around here, isn't there? Nope, guess not. Uh, then we have this QR here you want to read. And then your paint might also be here. And we want to read that one. And if your paint's at none of the places yet, it'll be right against one of those two pillars back there. I think it's this one in particular. Oh, that's player. And then we come up here to a box up high, you want to push yourself into this corner against a tree, and then tap left. Do it right, you can then do an item jump right up the tree to get up here. And I'm just going to wait for it to stop glitching. And then you can barely make that jump, make sure to jump last second. Now this can be a bit tricky, but again, you're going to have to learn it for any percent, so it's not too bad. Plus there isn't really a good alternative solution to this level. Oh, come on. So come into the corner, tap left, item jump up the side, jump over there, and then jump in and grab the sigil. I mean, after this we don't actually need paint anymore, so you can just restart checkpoint. That's why I wasn't doing it through the rest of the level. I'm gonna come here, grab the audio log, and read this QR. And over here we're going to come grab this connector to open this barrier. Quickly read these two QRs and grab the cube and walk all the way back around to this corner over here. Just go straight in the corner and X drop. And you'll get a guard to jump up onto this wall which you can just use to jump over here and grab the sigil. B5, firstly, three QRs right here. And now we're going to do another cube jump here. We don't actually need to get slightly elevated sigil, because we skipped the gate in A1. We have three extra green sigils to work with. So you again want roughly equal portions of the cube to be in the corner there, so it's roughly a. Well, then you want to line it with kind of like the right edge of that pillow. Back up as far as you can and switch to slow player speed again and 60 FPS again. And again, pick up and. Whoops, don't know why that didn't work. Pick up and jump on the cube at the same time. And that should send you over the entire level. And ooh, I almost got hold of death, so that wouldn't have been nice. The setup usually lands you right back here, it's not usually that close. So if you land back here, sometimes you can be lucky and land straight in there, you place the cube in this corner and make sure it's actually in the corner. And then when you inch around a bit, you'll see a guided jump prompt up here. So you can then jump down here. Also again, as soon as you do the cube jump, you can actually switch back too fast and uncapped. Because we're going to need it. So we're going to come in here and grab this jammer. And this is kind of a tricky nose to jump. 
But I find this sort of half of the tree. So it needs to be on this side of the tree that I'm looking at now, but I find this half to be a bit more consistent. But you want a nose who jump on it to hopefully make it over this hall and make sure you're going backwards through it all. But getting the jammer out is really good for this level because it trivializes these two puzzles because you can just jam the final barrier. So you do that. In here, quickly, three more QRs you want to be reading. And then again here you can just jam the final barrier. Because we don't need the jammer again, you can reset checkpoint. Okay, for Alley of the Pressure Plates, this is kind of a weird strat. Well, it's weird to explain, it's a really simple once you've learned it. So you come here behind the fan, and you do a fan slide, which involves pausing, holding space, then unpausing and waiting like half a second, then spamming space. Whoops. And basically that'll fling you forwards to somewhere around here, and then you get the guy to jump to actually land on the wall. If you really want to, you can do it with just pressing space once at the right timing, but spamming it is so much easier. And then you just walk across that wall a bit, and do a last second jump off there, over that, which barely makes it and grabs you the sigil. Okay, B6, start with these two QRs. And come around here and read these two as well, and now we're getting to Egyptian Arcade. So you grab this jammer and walk around here, and then you can just do a normal item jump straight up here. You can then grab the jammer again and then jump up this wall. From here, walk straight into this bit, and then from on top of this wall, you can sprint jump and make it over the fence here. Walk onto this wall, and this jump can be a bit tricky. You want to land on this side of the wall, and then just drop straight down here into the very corner where you'll be safe. From here, then jam that turret, and then hug this wall to get out here behind the sigil, and then you can just tap forwards and grab it. And usually, actually, you go far enough that they start killing you, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to go that far. You'll be resetting anyway. Crisscross, it's actually a really simple solution here. If you set that up like that, you want the connect to be kind of close to the receiver there. And you just come onto this pile of rocks, which is high enough to let the two beams cross over each other instead of like overlapping. So you can really easily grab the sigil. And I just had to check something. So for this one, we're going to be doing the speedrun strat, even though I I do find it a bit tricky sometimes. Well, I do think you could find it a bit tricky. So you set that connector up to open that barrier. And you walk right into this corner here, and either do a nosey, I think they're more consistent, or a perfect item jump like that, to get over this wall and grab the sigil. And then when we've done all that, we can leave this level. Almost actually done with QRs by this point, we're at 64, about 67 because it's free extra. One of my trials. Do you not feel the pleasure of having discovered the So you read those four QRs and then you come over that here into a bubble that. Oh, sorry, it's a fan across forever. I'm getting my levels confused. And then this is kind of weird. You'll notice this wall is slightly sloped, which means we can technically perfect item jump up it. So you grab your jammer, and then you need to just place the jammer slightly away from yourself, and jump, and eventually when you do it right, you'll make it over the small, and you can grab the sigil. You then come back here to a whole lot of jamming. Read this QR quickly. Now 
I'll give you another jam with lunch. This one's a bit easier on uncapped. If you have enough trouble, you might still want to switch to 60. Jam this, grab this jammer, and then we just sort of bring them back and forth to reach the end of the level. This a big puzzle portion in this level is basically just getting that extra jammer. Just the one the jammer glitch kind of trivializes it all, as you'll see. And this would be the other thing, actually. These are beeping at you, but you're perfectly safe back here. You can be a grab one, and now this might be kind of tricky. But you grab one of yours and hug this wall to make it out here. And then, whoops, hit the wrong button, you do a nosy jump here to get your jammer out, because we're going to use this again. So we're going to come up here, grab this audio log firstly, and then read these five QRs. Then go straight into this corner, and then you actually only need to do a perfect item jump here, but... Again, I like noses in this type of wall more. Come on. This one might be a bit tricky, but you don't really have... Well, actually, I guess the other options do intended here. It's not too bad. But once you have that, reset checkpoint and go straight ahead to the Glump of Mine. And this one also has an audio log. It's First World of Two. So we grab that too. This one, it's going to be similar to Eagle's Nest, but you don't have the nice lineup of the second one. So place the first cube so the corner goes into the wall, jump on it, and then... I'm not really sure what the right angle is, something like this will work. Just place the cube, hold back, and spam space. And then we're almost done with the QR achievement now. Finished with these, we're going to head to C, and along the way, we're going to go get it. Okay, so we have three QRs here. One back here, and then five over here, but we should get the achievement after just two, because I miscounted. Yep, there we go. You can read all five in case you missed one somewhere else. So now at this point, if that was the only achievement you needed, you can just leave, you're done. But I'm going to do the rest of this to get the remaining audio logs. So blow back. It's kind of tricky at first, but you do a nose jump up this tree with the cube. If you have enough trouble with that though, what you can try instead is placing the cube there and jumping into sort of an invisible platform here, and then spam space and see if you can make it over. But once you're in this bit with the cube, oh actually no, there's an even easier way, I'll show you instead. You jump in here with the jammer, sorry I forgot all about this. You do a jammer glitch here, jam that barrier, and then you can just walk your other cube in here. Okay, so over here you want to place your cube so it's... Well, like, this is the right line. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It needs to be between the tree and the wall, though. And grab the other cube and do a guided jump on top of it. And this is just doing what we call a cube elevator. It's slowly going up, but whoops, we don't need it anymore. So as long as you have the other cube... Jump over here, place it on that button, grab the sigil and reset. So now I'm actually going to do another cube jump. So come in here again, jam this barrier. And stand back a bit just so it doesn't get in the way of the cube. This cube, you just want to place it so that the cube's still parallel to the wall barrier. But so that its corner barely clips the corner of that wall. Then you look at it at about 45 degrees, you go into options, switch player speed to fast, and max FPS to 60 again. Whoops. 
um, do a cube jump to land you somewhere back here. Again, as soon as you finish the cube jump, you can switch these back. And come straight into this corner, extract the cube, jump on the wall, and then do a short jump onto this bit of the wall. If you mess up and fall in here, you can also come around to the other side, whoops, come around here, and either nozu or perfect item jump to get back up the wall here, and then do this jump. To collect the sigil and then leave Slevel and head over to Conservatory. Uh, if you're lucky like me, you'll have paint here and you can use it. But I'm going to show off the connective strat anyway. Come over here, roughly in line with the corner. That wasn't quite right. This can be a bit tricky with connector, I found. It's at the other corner. Huh. Okay, there it is. And you just do a perfect item jump to make it up here. Again, if you have paint, you can use that and it's easier, so I'll actually show it off too. With paint, you just come here and remember with paint, you don't need to look, so otherwise you can look straight down. Like, this is supposed to be easier, trust me. But you make it here and you can just walk around that and drop down here to grab the sigil. Then we're going to head forwards here, there's an audio log there you want to grab. Now we're going to MIA. Before this we're going to jump under the bridge. Oh, interesting that that interrupts a time capsule. Never noticed that before. But we're going to jump under the bridge and grab the head of the canal statue. And you can actually just place that straight on the button there and it works, it's kind of interesting. This is just part of an easter egg in this world where you build a canal from serious sand. It's not too important, but pieces do occasionally help us route stuff. If you go bring both the statue head and this cube up here, you make a two cube stack, jump on it, jump on this bit of the wall, and then you grab the top cube again and extract to get on top of it. And then you can do a guide jump up onto the roof here and jump straight down to grab the sigil. This audio log right here first, and Elohim instantly inter interrupts it, nice. So here we're doing another fan slide to connect those to just start the fan. Stand behind it, remember you pause, start holding space, unpause, wait a bit, and then spam space. And that'll end you up here where you can grab the sigil and leave. Okay, so in most cases you'll find paint down there. So need it again, but if you're unlucky, your paint might have spawned right there. So you're gonna come grab your paint. And come up here and along with a line of sort of this bit of the rocket sticking out there. Like so ends you up up here. Sometimes weird stuff happens with this geometry, like you get half clipped in. If it happens, just try again, basically. Uh, but then, from on top of this bit of the rock which sticks out of it, you can jump up here, and then from here you can just jump over the wall here to collect the sigil. Your wisdom then walk straight out of the level, come into this corner here, spam space, and you just kind of pop up. It's weird, I'm not sure why. Then just follow the wall around here and drop down here to grab Jamma Quarantine. And then finally we need big stairs, little stairs. So for this, grab this fan and place it there so you have a cube. Then go grab the cube up there. And place them both onto the slope here. And then when you back up here, you should be able to get a guy to jump up here. There's frogs of people too. And then if you inch around the corner, you can get a guy to jump up onto these frogs. And you can just jump over here and grab this sigil. If you don't get the guy to jump, just rearrange your cubes a bit and you will eventually. Okay, 
is for C6, we can let the artist grab the audio log. This is all ego, isn't it? Recording these random thoughts, these then you place that there, and we jam a glitch here. Yeah. There we go. Jam this, you can grab this cube. And then this is a bit of a silly out of bounds. Come into this corner, X drop the cube, and jump onto this wall. And you can just walk in here. And you're inside the model now. And apparently going out of bounds interrupts it too. Interesting. Uh, but grab the cube here and then just jump this way into the nothingness. And you'll end up onto this bit of the wall. Off the ground, I mean. And be a bit careful here because the death wall is quite close to you. But inch round here with your cube, and you can walk through this gap and end up in here to grab the sigil. And then, here's a Minecraft Easter egg, but on this specific bit of the wall, you want to extra drop your cube, and then you can also get a guy to jump straight up here. And you can take it over here and grab the sigil. And we're going to do this again, kind of. We're going to grab the cube again. Then we're going to come back, jam this barrier, and place the cube just roughly in this wall. You need to touch the wall a bit. The outline needs to touch the wall a bit, but it still needs to be sort of perpendicular. Although it's not too precise, this cube jump. Because this one we're actually going to be doing slow player speed again, but 30 FPS. That's 60. 30, there we go. And just pick it up and grab it. And jump on it at the same time, which ends you up out here. This is all we wanted, so fast player speed and unlimited again. And come onto one of these graves and you need to roughly get centered, but then you can just X drop it. And then you can guide it, jump up onto this wall and grab the sigil. Okay, now on the way here, we're going to unlock platform. I haven't unlocked this in a while, so um, I'm just going to look up the solution actually, sorry. Alright, uh, but yeah, sorry, you don't usually unlock this, so I've kind of forgotten what it's supposed to be. There we go, you do that solution. And then head over into C5. Sorry, just had to deal with my notes a bit. Before the age of chaos, there were other gods. Uh, oh yeah, I remember what I'm meant to do here. But for all their power, so you come in here, you don't accidentally hit X. And you make a two cube stack here, which if you stand on this small bit of the wall you can jump on top of and then onto this wall. You grab that sigil. If you want you can try a bump jump there. Doesn't usually work out, so just walk around and jump on the two cube stack again, make it up this wall again, and walk around here. And then from on top of this pillar, it needs to be from on top of the pillar, you can jump over this wall and grab Dumbwaiter. Now we're going to break a cube out of here. Again, so you place the cube on this bit of raised rock, and then take the guard jumps up and out. And then not exactly in the corner, but off to the side of it, you place this cube. That should let you get a guard to jump up here. You walk across to this pillar, back up a bit, and the jump's kind of tricky, but you should be able to get it within a few attempts to make it over here and down here. And down there to grab the sigil, sorry. And just walk out the level again, grab your cube, okay, grab that audio log, and jump onto this bit of the rock, and X drop. If you fall off, you can just walk right up next to it, yeah, and then jump up here, grab the last sigil. 
Can you don't go to the Star World or what? Turn lines endings. I'm just gonna come right round to C7. Uh, yep, C so grabs that audio log first. This is the uh, only other world with two audio logs in it, actually. So you're gonna open that and bring this cube over here. You can then jump into this tree, pick up the cube again, and jump onto the wall. And then come around here and drop the cube outside of the level, but then turn around and grab the sigil again. You then take the cube to outside this level, dead man switch. And this is kind of weird, it's similar to a fan slide, you want to pause, hold space and unpause. But then you also want to quickly afterwards place and pick up your connector again. And I find this easy if you start in one of these two areas on the side here. Ah, uh, come on. And what that'll do is it'll block your guider jump, so the game thinks you can't make it. Interesting that I can jump on top of this sign. Huh. But the game thinks you won't make the guider jump and just teleports you to the end, so you just skip the barrier, which would make you drop the connector. And come here, and you can sort of barely through the ones and zero. See the outline of that source there. It's a blue source, which is what we need, and actually you want to place it roughly on the staircase here. Move the cube out of the way, and come back inside Deadman's switch, and connect the two. It's a lot easier than doing the intended solution. Then you come back out, grab the cube once more, and you come onto this rock where you can X drop it, and then get a guy to jump onto this pillar. And this bit's kind of tricky, the wall isn't the uh, friendliest to walk on. You come walk here, you jump over that because you'll slip off if you try sneak around. Then you walk around here and jump over that. Which then just lets you walk over to the end of the level here. Okay, and then finally we get carrier pigeons, but first we have an audio log there. Come inside carrier pigeons, reset and then just run straight for the sigil, because the laser takes too long. Okay, now we're going to go to see Messenger. We will go to the other Messenger worlds in time, but this one's just here right now, so we might as well. We're not actually getting a Messenger or anything, so they're pretty useless. We're just coming here for the audio log. Okay, so for throne room, what we want to do is come all the way around here, grab this connector, and use it to open that barrier there. And you can run back, grab the cube, and run all the way around again to here. This is a kind of weird strat. You want the very edge of the outline to be on that raised portion. If you have too much, you won't be able to stand on the cube afterwards, but if you do it just right like that, you can stand on the cube and take a guy to jump up here to completely trivialize the level. Then head over to Armory. Here we're gonna... Oh, I'm not really gonna call this intended. You open this up to get the jammer. And jammer glitch through this. This is a bit of a tricky one, so 60 fierce might help you with that jammer glitch. Jam the fan and then just take the fan off it. Come back, jam this barrier, uh, jam this barrier, and solve armory. Then reset and come back for the jammer. And this is kind of hard, but it's the best solution for Oubliette by far, or the easiest I mean. So if you notice from here, you can barely see the barrier in Oubliette. And if you do it just right, you can jam it from here. And that means then in the level you can grab either the cube or the platform here, place it on the button, and uh, place it on the button and grab the sigil. And last level we go for the stables. 
This is like trying to glitches the level. So you might find 60 fierce helps you here. Especially with just like a share amount, but I can do these all uncapped pretty easily. Grab the citrill and off to C2. So here we're going to start with Rapunzel. This so it's not really the best, but we don't have many better. If you come up here, jump onto this bit of the wall, and then on this raised pillar, you place the cube. Grab the other cube, and now here, kind of tricky jump there. I don't think you need to worry about, yeah, you don't need to worry about the tree, it doesn't have collision that high. But you do need to jump like last second off of the cube to make it. And climb up the wall here, and if you place the cube at sort of a 45 degree angle like this, and X drop it. But normally, not this time apparently. Let's try again. Okay, normally it gives you a guide jump prompt, but even if it doesn't, all you need to do is another sort of tricky last second jump over. Which will end you up in the citral area. And then you actually go back, because we want to use these cubes again. This time we're not going quite as high, we're just going to jump straight over that fence. Come over to this small like, angel statue, climb it with your cube, then X drop on top of it to get onto this wall. And grab the cube again. Come over to the same statue here and do the same thing. Get into this wall and then jump down here to grab cemetery. Come back for the cube again and this one's probably the hardest of it. You come sort of to where the ground tilts like that and if you do it right you can jump straight in here. And then follow the wall around a bit just to make it past this, and you can walk back here and grab the citral. Then finally we're just going to come and do the short wall as intended. Technically there is a simple way to get this with the cube too, but I think intended it's easier. So now we have all the signals we need, we just need to go off and grab the remaining audio logs. So for this, firstly we have the big journey of the axe. Because there are audio logs in the A and B messenger, and we do need the axe to unlock them unfortunately. Technically there might be a way to clip into them, but then you wouldn't be able to get out, so it's kind of pointless. Mm. And we of course can't do a elevator skip here because the sudden walls are reset and that'll make us lose our axe. So for these you don't actually even need to go for the elevator skips, it just opens the elevator door slightly early and when you make it to the bottom. So as you see, the door's open and you can make it out before it snaps closed again when it realises what's happened. Uh, but so here, we're going to open the messenger island, but then we're instantly going to leave and head back to B. It's 15 seconds faster to do it this way than it would be to go back to C and grab the axe again. It's just because A is like so close, it's such, such a short elevator ride. Finally, we're here in B, and we can open B Messenger. 
And now it's just a bunch of walking, basically. The audio logs all the way behind that building. and try and grab the thing now, like I said it's 15 seconds faster being able to skip these elevators. And also not needing to go back to C actually, I think that's the main reason it's faster. So Amos and Drew don't need to solve anything either. I thought we might have to actually, because there are the two islands here and you might need to get the fan to the other one, but no, luckily not. The audio log is right over here. Okay, now the last thing to do is climb the tower and grab the five audio logs there. Not all of these doors actually have efficient, damn it, have efficient solutions posted, but I know the first three. So as soon as you finish one of these resets, it instantly opens the door. But again, here was the solution you meant to do. And then you can come in here. Uh, this isn't a bump jump, you walk forwards, walk up here, and then jump up here and make it across the gap. Although if you can't get that consistently it's not too much slower to go do intended like this. Okay, so now there's some very specific keys you want to press in this level. First you want to press enter, or mash it, really, so you can get through this first a bit quicker. And so that's going to select device manager. Then want to press 2, then 2 again, to say open floor 2. Enter to confirm. 2, then 3. Because floor 3's code is always 215, so we can put that in now. And then 4 to exit and click the exit button manually. Now before I forget, grab this audio log too, and then leave to floor two. A curiosity. Every intelligence so we're not actually going to solve floor two because we already unlocked floor three, but there is an audio log here we need to get. So once again, this was the fast solution here. I like to think of it in sort of three sections. You have the L section here, so there's a double there, and the third one down there, and one hanging there. And the T section, and then there's just the O. But yeah, you do that solution, jump down here, grab this audio log, and then head straight back to floor three. Now the codes for floors 4 and 5 are randomised the moment you read the document that contains them, so there's no way for us to guess them unfortunately, and we couldn't like manipulate the RNG. So we just need to come here and do the floors as intended. Well not necessarily as intended, but go for each floor manually. So this here was the floor 3 solution, you have the eyes up there and then this weird combination of shapes. Grab that audio log, and here we're just gonna do the intended solution. So, in a recording, jam this barrier and jam it from the other side in real life. Come back through, jam this barrier, wait a bit, turn around, and leave, and then real you just walks through that barrier, jams this barrier, and comes up to the terminal. 
So here instead you click the top right option or right Osiris password. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that, sorry. Password is 754 for me, it'll be different for you. Like I said, it's randomized every time. So it's 2, 4, and then your code, which is 754, and I accidentally added a 3. There we go. Unfortunately, you can't backspace, it would be nice. And then 4 and exit. And turn around and head up to floor 4. Almost done here. So this uh, doesn't actually have an efficient solution found yet, so I just do this one. You never come up here in speedruns anyway. So then we go, we have T's surrounding one O, and then S and Z surrounding the other, and just the L and J, just like making it a square. Floor 4 audio logs down here again. Apparently that pillar is no clipping. Uh, so here this is kind of interesting. You grab this cube. You don't actually need the cube, it just makes it a lot easier. Walk into the wall a bit. You want your crosshair to still be over the floor and then etch drop. On the corner a bit further and jump around and just grab the keys. Technically it's possible without the cube like I said, but it's just a lot easier if you do use it. Once again we read sacred numbers.txt first and 863 for me, it'll be different for you, remember. Two five from your code. And then four and click exit. And then walk through the purple barrier again. It's Still confuses me. Get up to four or five, last floor, last audio log scene. So this solution is split into three parts again. It's not necessarily an efficient solution to it's just what I came up with. You might be able to do better with all the space you have. But again, you never come here in speedruns. So you have this bit up here, which is just like block building, and then you have two squares here. Kind of like the cube solution, I think this one is cube solution exactly. Then just come out here and grab that, and you have your last achievement. So yeah, that was it, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you won't get any to run this again, because you have everything now. And yeah, you can get started on any percent.